It has been, first let me just say, such an absolute pleasure to be here in New Zealand finally. Um, I have never been here before and to spend time with the Teach First NZ team and family of supporters um, to meet the participants, to get out into the schools, to meet the incredible partners who've had so much to do um, with the success of the organization has been, I mean really there's so much that I hope and, and assume that you're proud of. Um, you know, to see the strength of the partnership, to see an organization really taking on the very hard work and sort of the learning journey of approaching its work in a culturally responsive way, um, to see the diversity of the cohort. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some of the things that have most struck me, but it's just been tremendous. Um, I never would have thought that I would be here in New Zealand. Uh, this journey started for me 27 years ago now, I believe, when I thought of an idea as a college senior that was very quickly, very far beyond me. And the, the simple idea was that, you know, many of the most promising future leaders, the most talented folks in our generation would jump at the chance to, you know, we were all being called upon to commit just two years to work in banks and consulting firms, and I just thought, how about asking us to commit two years to teach in our highest need communities? Um, and it was just one of those things that was clearly meant to happen in my own country. Um, I never probably would have predicted the extent to which it would kind of take off. Um, but at this point, we yeah, have 10,000 teachers in the midst of two-year teaching commitments in 50 urban and rural communities and 40,000 alumni um, who you know, true to form, as you all have heard, you know, early in your journey, um, but they never really leave the work. You know, they come in unsuspecting, thinking I'm going to commit two years, but um, in some cases now, 25 years later, I mean, still about 86% of those 40,000 Teach for America alumni are doing mission-related work. Two-thirds of them full-time in education, others from other sectors, but doing things that impact low-income communities um, or schools. Um, but as much as you know, I had my head down and was focused on, on that journey, which continues, um, when about 10 years ago, there was just something in the water in the rest of the world. And Brett Wake Dwarts, who started Teach First in the UK, uh, and I heard in one year from 13 people from 13 different countries, from India to Lebanon to Chile to China, um, who were just determined for one reason or another to do something similar in, in their countries. And you know, they were looking for help and one thing led to another and that's really what generated um, ultimately the launch of the Teach for All organization and network um, now, now eight years ago. Um, the, the big idea, as Sean articulated and, and others have articulated, um, but that really unites every one of the organizations in this network is that, first of all, the issue that we now call educational inequity, which is a pervasive global issue. I mean, as you say, not just an issue here in New Zealand, not just an issue in my own country where it kind of continues to rage, but really all over the world, where kids are born predicts their educational opportunity, their educational outcomes, and ultimately their life outcomes. And that is a not only a massive problem, but a very complex and very systemic issue. And, you know, usually in history and in every other realm of, of life, when we've got big problems, we, you know, put our, quote, best people on those problems. I mean, um, business leaders, leaders in other sectors know this. And yet, in virtually every country in the world, we send our best educated recent college graduates, our, our most promising future leaders, towards everything but expanding opportunity for the most marginalized kids, into medicine and law and lots of worthy pursuits, technology, finance, et cetera, but almost never towards this issue. And that is what all of us across the Teach for All network are, are working to change. 
Um, so I think there are some in the world who kind of misunderstand this approach as being about two years of teaching. And it is about the two years. Those two years are unbelievably important uh, for the kids in our, our classrooms and for the participants themselves. But it's about every year after the two years. Um, and you really can't begin to see the impact of this approach for, for several years. And so um, one thing I do when I get to talk with folks like you who are really at the front end of, of this endeavor um, is, is to share what I've seen to happen now in my own country in communities where we've now been going at it in some cases. I mean, hard to, for me to believe, but for 25 years. So I thought I would just share one example of one community. I think I talked to some of you this morning about our nation's capital, which started as the <laughs> lowest performing of the major urban districts and is now the fastest improving, um, where if you took all the Teach for America alumni out of the picture, you would just take away so much of the energy and leadership that's driven the change. But I'll, I'll share another example tonight um, of the city of New Orleans. Um, which is a very striking example to me because when we started placing teachers in New Orleans, it was by our estimation far more extreme in terms of the inequities that we saw than any other place we had seen in our country. And, and we would routinely meet 13 year olds, eighth graders who were reading on the level of seven year olds. That, that was what we found to be pretty much the, the average. And, you know, it was, it was truly, I mean, I, I think even now, having seen many other contexts around the world, I think it's fair to say that the conditions really were very strikingly similar to, to the conditions you would find in third world countries. And yet, despite, you know, lots of attention on this on some level, nothing seemed to, to change. And so it's kind of amazing to see what has happened in just even the last 10 years. Um, you know, we used to see graduating about half of the kids in New Orleans from high school, and the standards were very low, I mean, notoriously low. And in the last 10 years, the standards have increased a lot, and yet the graduation rate has also increased, so that about 73% of the kids growing up in New Orleans are now graduating from high school, meeting these, these much higher standards. Um, the college going rate of those graduates, so now many more graduates, but the percentage of them going to college has also grown dramatically just in the last 10 years from 43% to 58%. So if you're walking around schools in New Orleans, that data doesn't even begin to capture what you see. Like if you were walking around schools 10 years ago and now walking around schools today, you, would, you wouldn't actually, I can't believe it's the same city. Um, Many things happened to bring these changes about, many things. And, and they included you know, a, a governor, a, a hurricane that really um, led to the kind of shutdown of the school system and a governor saying we, we're gonna take over at the state level because the situation's so extreme. It, it, it entailed many things. But as is the case with our nation's capital, if you took out the Teach for America people from the picture, it's really hard to imagine how the progress would have happened. They're, they're literally running half of the schools in New Orleans as school principals. They're a third of the teachers in, in the system. Um, and they're the state commissioner, uh, you know, again, presiding over this system as well as the other districts in the state. They're a third of the people who work in the State Department of Education. And they've started 50 social enterprises in New Orleans to help orchestrate and support the change, um, you know, both to address issues within schools and, and to address some of the other issues facing the kids growing up in this very high poverty community. So I say all that just to try to bring to life that, you know, the going is, is tough in this. There are lots of, this is a very complex issue um, and, and program to undertake, and yet I would just say it's it's just worth the, the time and the perseverance because over time it really starts paying off. Um, I just heard a, a couple of statistics from the Chicago public school system just to again bring to light that time makes a difference. Ten years ago there were three principals in, New, in Chicago that were Teach for America alumni. Five years ago there were 30 and today there are 82. 
So you see how much progress if everyone just stays with it and continues the, the effort to get bigger and better you can, you can really make. Um, so that's, that's one thing that gives me a lot of optimism of, about this approach. But there is another thing, and it, it brings me back to something that, that Terry was sharing earlier, um, that is, is hugely fueling my optimism at the moment. And it's to see, the, I guess, the, the benefits of taking a global approach. Um, you know, the thing that I knew when I started out in this, and something that has been massively reinforced for me, is that, um, you know, there's tremendous diversity across the world. I mean, every country, you know, every country is obviously different. Every community is different. The, the diversity of context and culture is, is extraordinary, and there are huge advantages to that diversity. You know, I think about what um, Sean and his team and supporters are doing here to innovate and build on and adapt the approach that others have taken and, and what yeah, and various other places are doing to um, do what you know I started out doing in the US but so much better in so many ways so there's such power in in diversity and yet the other thing that I've learned along the way which really struck me because I didn't start out understanding this is that really the roots of the issues that are behind kind of educational inequity are almost eerily similar you know, the mindsets, the, the policies, the practices that fuel the whole thing. And there's something a little bit depressing about that. You start thinking we are fighting the forces of gravity all over the world. But the silver lining is that it, it means the solutions are shareable. So when you start thinking about the possibilities in this, of a network of organizations channeling their country's, you know, top talent towards this issue, um, in diverse contexts and cultures that inspire innovation and different ways of thinking as part of a global network where the leaders we're working to develop are actually informed by each other's innovations. Um, you know, we could truly move the needle against this, this very global issue in our lifetime. I mean, I truly believe that this work, if we live into our potential, which of course is a big if, um, you know, has, has hugely accelerating possibilities. Um, which brings me back to why I am so excited to be able to, uh, well, actually, about two things. First of all, about Teach First and Zed, because I know that your incredible work here will not only make a difference in New Zealand, but your innovations will influence our whole global network. Um, and secondly, uh, they inform why I'm so excited to bring our global community here to New Zealand in October. Um, we're so excited to expose our network both to the kind of emerging work of, of Teach First NZ early in its trajectory and to um, the strengths in the New Zealand education system um, and, and the, the learnings um, and thinking that uh, that, that is going on here, particularly as it relates to, to meeting the needs of the indigenous students who, who are here. So, um, I know that, that this conference will move us all forward across the world, and I'm just very, very grateful to all of you all for all the support of Teach First NZ and Teach For All, um, and for, for welcoming us here with, with such open arms. I really look forward for many years to come to learning alongside you in, in this work. So thank you very much.